part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Hey, welcome to the podcast of Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And this segment was going to be just little little bits, but it ended up being a whole conversation. This is Thoughts with Tyler in the Car. That's right. There's been a lot of shakeup and conversations in DC, and I just had a lot going on in my brain. And I just started making little comments into the phone and then it turned into a full-on conversation enough to be its own episode but just thoughts with tyler in the car episode of krypton report enjoy (laughs) just driving around hanging out with my sailor got some thoughts with james gunn now heading dc studios is there a per chance a way to get the air cut maybe also deep thought Here's my pitch. Pitch number one. The Flash has a post credit scene with Supergirl. And it also has Leslie Grace show back up as Batgirl. All right. Then what we do is we get the cast back from Batgirl. And we just kind of remake the Batgirl movie. But this time it's a Batgirl Supergirl movie. That's pitch one. Pitch two is we make a sequel, a proper Birds of Prey film. That they recruit Batgirl or she joins the team and it's Leslie Grace. So we get her back into the fold and let her shine as the character she was working on. That's my two pitches. Just things to think about. So with James Gunn and Saffron now having a DC Studios. The all-encompassing DC world that we've been waiting for. We know... That Flash is coming to an end. So what does that mean for the other shows? Hopefully Gotham Knights is cancelled. But the idea that will Gunn serve as this overarching producer that's going to take over too. We know that Peacemaker is the first and only TV series right now that officially connects to the DC films. Will we start to get that, uh, you know, all in connected world, or will everything get soft rebooted and still be in its own multiversal pocket? We have Titans season four coming up, Doom Patrol season four, and we just had season three of Pennyworth come out Will those shows all continue? We had theorized before that after these seasons that they'd probably be canceled by the way that Zaslav was turned, getting rid of properties. The other big one being Superman and Lois. And Stargirl. We were supposed to hear an update about Stargirl, what happens after season three. Which if you're not watching season three, it's been amazing. And I feel like Stargirl's been the, the best DC show that not everyone has watched. But it's been a great show to watch alongside my son. Um, And that's really all the live-action DC properties that we have at the moment. There's rumbles of other things starting, but at this point, if it's not actually been filmed or filming, I'm really not holding my breath on things unless it's been announced, such as, you know, Superman projects in the future. So, TV-wise, we have Superman and Lois, Titans, Doom Patrol, Pennyworth, Stargirl, and then technically The Flash, but we all know that that's ending this season. So, what, what's next for DC TV? We know Peacemaker will continue. It has a second season they'll be working on. So, what do we do? Do we make everything multiversal and exist in its own unique universe continue? Or do we cut ties and kind of get everything in-house one place? That's, that's a good question. 
um, you know, the biggest thing was that's kind of what we had wanted with DC Universe was everything was coming there. And we and we lost so much. We lost Swamp Thing. You know, that was a casualty of crap. Because that show was really good and had a lot of potential. And it, and we lost it. We've lost a lot of where things are, so to speak. Like, recently, okay, Gotham is on HBO Max. It's back home, quote-unquote. Uh, I think Constantine, the series, is still at uh, CWC, I think it is, streaming. But let's get that, I guess, to HBO Max. Let's get everything in one hub. That's that's just me. I want all my DC in one place, like Smallville's on Hulu. And see, there's still shows that aren't on a platform, like Superboy's on Tubi. Uh, the old Batman 66 is there. The Adventures of Superman is not streaming. So let's really puff up DC and get everything back in one place to stream. And their animated stuff. Like Justice League Action, uh, Crypto the Superdog, the Legion. These are all things I can feel on top of my head in this early hour as I'm recording this as I'm driving. I feel like if we have DC Studios proper, maybe we can get everything together. Maybe, just maybe, we'll start to feel more together. I mean, Everyone makes the DC and Marvel comparison, yes. But Marvel has their films and their TV. And now, all their TV is on Disney+. Plus. They've streamlined it to one place. And that's what I'd like to see with, uh, with, with DC. It's all one place. I know that there are contracts that were signed with Netflix for shows such as Flash, Arrow, Legends. Uh, and that one, but about no, not that one. My mistake. Black Lightning. So when those contracts expire, whatever those dates are, they'll most likely migrate over to HBO. That one was the first show that premiered directly on HBO and didn't go to Netflix. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, if on the other side is like, will Berlanti have any play in like running a television division of DC Studios and just kind of reboot and retool everything under that guidance kind of thing? Like James Gunn's the head and then you have a, a television di- division of this DC Studios. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> or is Berlanti just ready to step aside and be done? Is you know he he did his epic television work, and he's like, "Hey guys, I, I'm done. I check out." Don't know. All things to ponder as we move forward. I'm excited, you know, but I, I go with a grain of salt on everything. We we maybe where things go because we know that right now the whole DC Studios thing doesn't include the Batman and basically I think the entire the Batman world I think that's like in its own pocket thing I don't think it falls under the DC Studios but it's not incorporated in the interconnected which we all knew these things but from a business side same thing with Joker and its sequel which is fine. I mean, I, that's cool. I don't mind that at all. But how connective do they want things to be? We just have with this announcement, we haven't touched on yet, and we'll touch on it more, but I'm bringing it up here in my Tyler's deep thoughts as he drives, that the Green Lantern show that Berlanti was doing, it was going to be Alan Scott or whatever, had Seth Graham Smith had written the first eight episodes of that series, the Green Lantern 
which they just can't seem to get going, sadly. Sadly. And it was, it's been retooled, shelved, stopped. And it will now just be a Green Lantern, John Stewart-led show. Okay. <laughs> and there's now they're starting to see on the internet the rise of you get Wayne T. Carr back, who filmed scenes as Green Lantern for Zack Snyder's Justice League that was never produced. Scene. Okay. You know, my, my biggest thing is I think with Lanterns, it would be also be an anthology type show because you have so many earthbound Lanterns that people want to see. You know, we have Hal, Guy, and I think that having a show that would help encompass all of them as a core would be neat. I mean, I've always thought back about the 90s X-Men cartoon, how I'd watch an episode and there'd be certain X-Men in it, others weren't in it, but there was never any explanation of why they weren't there. So I always thought that could be kind of an interesting way of doing a, maybe not exactly an anthology show, but like a show that has all the lanterns and were with different ones at different times. I think that could be exciting. I don't know. I don't know. It just Greenlanders are property that they just haven't been able to, to seem to get to work. And for anyone who doesn't know, Berlanti, before he was Brad Berlanti, worked on the Green Lantern film, had a script and everything, was producing it before the studio kind of took it over and had more writers, more people in there. And they really kind of took the film another place and it feels like Green Lantern is the last big project attached to Greg's heart that he wants to do right that he hasn't got to. So I'm hoping that with all those changes that maybe he'll be able to or we'll be able to do right by the Lanterns. And maybe we'll find out soon that we're going to get a Green Lantern universe series, and then we'll have a Green Lantern film with a different Lantern. I have long been a, per, a component for Jessica Cruz, just because that adds another main female character to the Justice League pantheon, and having a young daughter myself, I see and I know the importance of having strong uh, female character superheroes for them. And anyone who will try to argue differently, just if you don't have a child that's a you know a daughter, it you might not get it. Or nieces, like I've seen people talk about with their nieces. You know that's one of the things I think why Captain Marvel did as well as there was an, a powerful female character. You know, yeah, Black Widow, she can kick butt, but there's something to that power, and having a female Green Lantern up there. I think it would be something special for girls everywhere, you know, and I'm not a, above having different, you know, races and diversity because that's what makes life beautiful is the differences that we all share. So I, that's my thing. I think for the mainstay Justice League, it would be nice to have Jessica Cruz and she could pop into, say, the, you know, anthology series or the Green Lantern core series. And it would be great if you do do Jon Stewart. And he is your main character as an honor guard or something. And then you have, like, the Rook show up. And it's Kyle. And Guy pops in for an episode or two. And really fill out the world so that we feel like we're part of it. We've been there. I wouldn't even... I would not be surprised if they did do somehow and had Ryan Rill show up as Hal Jordan. A retooled version of Hal Jordan. You know, how he is now under new guidance, new... Uh, Shepherd Hood with Gun, and just make that continuity. And he's now off somewhere doing his own thing. And I don't know. But these are just thoughts that are running through my head about where DC can go. It's it's sad because I I still remember 
back in 2014 sitting at work the day after the Flash pilot, which was amazing. And I'm sitting there and on my phone getting the alerts about all these announcements from DC. And it's just like, ba-doom, 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 ba-doom. and it was when they officially, Ezra Miller's The Flash, Jason Momoa's Aquaman, Ray Fisher's Cyborg, and here's the movies they're going to be in. They're going to have their solo movie here, 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 you know, and we're going to do Black Adam with The Rock. And this was 2014. And it was just like, wow, it was so exciting. And we have learned our lesson about when things are announced. I mean, how many different Joker Harley Quinn movies were going to get? Or the Gotham City Sirens. Man, I, I would... I would love them to just come back and make the first DC make the first strong female led superhero teams movie. And like my pitch, I said, boom, this is it. Pitch three. The birds of prey versus the Gotham city sirens. It's a pseudo sequel to the suicide squad because it will continue Harley Quinn's journey. And you'll get a Catwoman. And a Poison Ivy, you will have the three established members of the Birds of Prey from the Birds of Prey. And then you will bring in Leslie Grace's Batgirl as part of the story. One of the most beautiful things about Ben Affleck's Batman is you can have him kind of in the background if you want as a shepherd. Because they did have an older Batman and we did not touch on his history. We did not touch on who his alliances were, who he had worked with. And we know that a Robin died at one point. Everyone thought it was Jason Todd. At one point, Zack Snyder had said it was uh, Dick Grayson. But when you apply my post-crisis theory to it, it works. We can do whatever Robin we want. It could be Jason Todd. We could do a Red Hood movie if we had, say, Affleck. If not, you know what? Let's do Batgirl and bring her in and just kind of allude to being trained or from, or however we can connect it to The Flash. And let's do a film where it's all female-led superheroes. Once again, my daughter was pumped for the Batgirl film that never happened. And it really upset her. Because kids... Deserve to root for their heroes, and girls deserve to have their heroes as well. But I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on the idea of Gotham City Sirens and Birds of Prey as a film? Pitch four. I think what would be really neat, since we only have one show operating in the DCEU as of right now, we're supposed to be getting that Amanda Waller show and. Yes, I'm saying DCEU until they name it something else. I have often not used that term because it's never been made official, but whatever, I'm tired. I think doing a show called DC Showcase would be really cool. Basically, every episode is another short in the DCEU world, filling in some of the gaps and stories that we've kind of wondered about. Here's some examples. If we continue on from... Zack Snyder's Justice League and hold that thought real quick let's do a story where Martian Manhunter arrives I have said my pitch would be that the Linux that we meet in BVS and in Man of Steel is not Martian Manhunter what happens is after he meets Kal-El uh Linux or no wait that's the actor sorry Swanson becomes interest in space and has a moment where they accidentally pull two Martians to Earth, much like the comics. The first comes out to White Martian. It starts battling. It mortally injures uh, Swanson. Then, of course, John Jones shows up. John Jones defeats the White, but he's trying to save Swanson as Swanson's dying. He then assumes Swanson's identity with his memories and all that through transfer. And that's how we get the Swanson that is in Zack Snyder's Justice League. 
That would be a cool little action power short, fill in some gaps, and continue the world. Um, now, just a quick note, if they decide to use the canon- canology, canonical version, whatever, of Justice League, which I'll refer to as for right now, biggest story points of that film that cannot continue where you can use either or is Martian Manhunter, the fact that we did see Darkseid, and the fact that Cyborg's dad is dead. All the rest can kind of be finagled in the story, okay, of where you want to take it. But those points are the biggest ones right off the top of my head. It has been a while since I've watched Justice League that would you have to try to explain or do something about. Now, the other idea for the DC Showcase series, and of course it's going to be a HBO Max, HBO Max because we want a high quality production value. Maybe a fun little heist story about Har- how Harley Quinn got locked up after Birds of Prey into how she got to appear in The Suicide Squad. That could be a fun little Harley hijinks type film. It could be fun. And there's a lot of ways you could do it depending on where you want to go. Uh, same thing with other characters that we've kind of... Oh, the other one that was a big one. Would be a really cool way to bring Henry back is you could do an episode of Bloodsport and Superman of how Bloodsport shot Superman. And he, Superman getting shot by Bloodsport. We, you know, haven't seen that. We just heard it. And that works. So that's my DC showcase pitch. Now, another thought that I had while doing this deep thinking podcast here is Constantine. We're supposed to be getting a Constantine sequel with Keanu Reeves. And that would play into the multiverse. But where does that fall? You know, is is the DC films... Is James Gunn overseeing kind of everything and then these, you know, non-connected films? He's like, hey, you just do your thing. So that would be, you know, like we talked about the Batman universe and the Joker sequel. So would Constantine 2 just fall into that? Just a thought. Just a thought here. For those of you who have not heard this speech before, I'm going to throw it back out there. Because I do think with the recent announcement of James Gunn taking over, it is a way to really make everything work tonally. I'm a big, contri- I'm a big, big lover of continuity and tone and uh, some sort of a balance. And with the way that the DC film started... I feel in many ways that a lot of people share my idea that the the tone and the balance doesn't always work. I get it. Totally do. Um, But here, and I've said this, and you can, this is my headcanon. You can argue it, but it works. And this is how it goes. Hold on. Looking at the pieces, one, Man of Steel was never created to be a vehicle to launch a universe. It just ended up being the vehicle to launch a universe. So look at it like this. A historical timeline, however you want to look at it. Man of Steel, BVS, Wonder Woman, The Suicide Squad, Zack Snyder's Justice League. That is post-crisis, or pre-crisis, sorry. Then Crisis on Infinite Earths happens. And if you're like, Tyler, that was a TV series. Yes, But Ezra Miller, This World's Flash, appeared on that. He disappeared. And then the end of that showed universes being rebuilt. Thus saying that that universe was rebuilt and part of the DC Universe multiverse being affected by crisis. Then you come back. Then you get, you know, Justice League. After that, Aquaman, Shazam, Birds of Prey. The Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman 1984, Black Adam, and Shazam Fury of the Gods. And then pretty much Aquaman 2 and and the Flash movie, which then could change continuity again, but we'll just stop right there. And if you listen to the dialogue in Aquaman, it matches up. 
with the one off comment about Steppenwolf that happens. Also, the only thing that you really have to argue about then, which can still be worked on in upcoming films with story, is Black Adam's origin that's kind of hinted at and spoken about in Shazam compared to what they say in Black Adam. Now, in Black Adam the film, they do kind of chop it up enough that him releasing the sins is still possible because they do give us this kind of shorthand vague of what he did after gaining the powers and fighting and conduct, blah, blah, blah. It can all work still. So that is how I choose to look at my films to argue with the tone and things like that. It also helps with connections between different films because we had this event where things do line up, but they're not perfect and things are a little bit brighter and more tonally. And we also have to factor in character evolution. Now, character evolution is a big thing, especially with Superman. People are complaining that he was too bright or too hopeful. And Henry Cavill has spoken about how he wants to be a joyful Superman. That's the that's the arc of coming back from being dead. Either any way you look at it, the 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 you know a joyful Superman does not say Justice League Superman. That's just the kind of arc that he would have, no matter who took over, after being dead and coming back and embracing who he is with a new team of friends, a new team of heroes. So that is how I choose to look at the films. It works. I like it. It really helps so you're not arguing too much about, well, they said this in Suicide Squad, but it doesn't work over here. Or, you know, remember when this happened, but why didn't they talk about this? Well, just apply the crisis and it works. Last thing to say, I'm, I'm happy with DC News. I love seeing something positive moving forward. I have a love for these characters. It goes really deep more than any others it's just kind of ingrained in my life since I was a child and it's just nice to feel some positivity and I'm I'm tired of toxic fandom I always choose to be like Henry and be hopeful even in signs of of downtroddenness and advers- I can't even talk anymore guys <laughs> it's always good to be hopeful and I'm hopeful for a bright future James Gunn has never really stepped into this kind of role, but looking at his career and where it's gone from writer to director to producing things, he always has had a love for comic books in this type of world. He's played on both sides. And I feel like in an evolutionary point, this is a unique way of taking a job and splitting it between two people. One more of the creative, one more of the business. And it's the next you know, evolutionary step in his career. I have liked James Gunn's films. I think his best work is probably Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Uh, He's written some fun stuff, and we know that with writers, you might write something amazing, but once it gets on set, things can be changed, dropped, retooled, cut, or rewritten by another writer. So he's, you know, had issues where he wrote Scooby-Doo movies, which I find them both enjoyable. And I don't suspect that he's going to put his flavor in everything. I think he's going to be a very creative person and let other creative people do their work. And he'll understand the process as a director himself. I mean, look at even his producing when he did Brightburn, an original kind of idea of an evil-esque Superman, which even that universe, I think, could have been a fun horror alternative to these superhero comic book movies that we've been in. And I wish they got expanded more. I I, I have hope, man. And that's all I can say. Um, I don't know the guy personally. You know, it seems like he's worked well with a lot of people, a lot of, you know, people that seem like genuinely good people. And... We'll see what happens, you know. Um, We got a few things in the pipeline. Maybe soon we'll find out what's going to happen to Blue Beetle. I told you guys before, my guess is 2024. Because there's not really anything coming for 2024. Maybe we'll find out more about what plans are for Wonder Woman 3 and what that's going to do, you know. Or we'll get some announcement of another Justice League film. That would be really epic. 
you know, shoot for like 2025 or something. But the future is hopeful and that's what we can say. So let's cling to that. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Please send a message to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, if that's your thing, or just good old fashioned email, cryptonreportpod at gmail.com. Give me a shout. I'll read it online. I love having conversations with our fans. And if you're ever interested in being on Krypton Report, shoot us a message because we love talking to fans. You guys have heard people pop in. They were just people we talked to on Twitter. That was like we invited on and they become friends and collaborators. You can join that group. So hit us up and remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth justice and hope remember to check out krypton report on all social media platforms go to linktree.com slash krypton report you find all of our information one dollar a month you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths so check it out patreon.com slash krypton report this is dan jurgens and if you want to have a good time keep listening to the krypton report